Hi guys, greetings from Bulgaria, I'm Anton and in this video we are going to discuss the proxy and adapter design patterns. In this new course on the Lambda Test video channel we are going to cover uh, a lot more design patterns. First we are going to see the proxy and adapter and how we can build a mini tiny test library or a framework as you wish to improve the maintainability and usability of our tests with the adapter. Then, uh, in the second uh, module out of this course, we are going to discuss the decorator to help us add new functionality to our mini framework, like highlighting, scrolling to view, and uh, for example, bringing toss messages without breaking the old code. Then, in the third module, we are going to discuss different variations of the singleton design pattern ensuring that the class handle uh, has only one instance while providing a global access point to this instance. This uh, pattern helps us to improve the API usability of our test library. Then in the next module we are going to cover the dependency injection pattern to achieve loosely coupled architecture um, and uh, enhance the test maintenance. Uh, we are going to use it to uh, is the creation of our page object models and other um, design patterns out of our mini library. Uh, the fifth video will be dedicated to chain of responsibility design pattern and we are going to use it to create a sophisticated tool for troubleshooting exceptions that occur during the test execution. Uh, it will be quite interesting. Then uh, we are going to cover the strategy design pattern uh, in our mini framework. We are going to add the possibility to easily add different ways for how you can locate different elements, improve the usability. And also we are going to do the same for uh, waiting for elements. Of course, out of uh, any uh, automated testing solution, it's really important to handle properly the test data. So there will be two patterns dedicated to test data management, the repository and the factory, and even the last one, the builder, can be used for this purpose. However, uh, we're going to use it for that as well, to uh, create test data, but also we're going to uh, create um, an easy way for doing uh, layout testing, um, verifying the different elements where they are on the web page. Last but not least, we're going to cover uh, the data-driven testing design pattern, testing pattern um, that can, um, you know, instead of copy-pasting different tests, we'll use MS test and N unit and X unit um, to to use their attributes to handling this um, multiplication of the tests, uh, and we're using the body for executing different test cases. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the ring bell so that you get notified about uh, many awesome videos that are published each week on the YouTube channel of Lambda Test. Also check the awesome blog. There are many technical articles there that can help you to, to be a much better engineer. So, in this particular video, uh, when we talk about uh, proxy and adapter design patterns first, of course, we are going to cover what is actually a design pattern. Then we are going to see a demo. Um, first, initially, we are going to use Vanilla WebDriver uh, to just explain um, to, um, to different test cases. And then we are going to upgrade them with page objects. Of course, this is not the purpose of the video, so we are going quickly through the content. Uh, but uh, we need to do that so that you can more easily understand the patterns when we upgrade them uh, using the proxy and the adapter. So, first, what is a design pattern? We can define the design patterns as prescribed solution to everyday software challenges. They don't consist of code or any specific algorithm, but instead they describe how to group your logic smartly how to reuse it, how to make it easier to maintain. It is basically a template for solving design problems, which uh, we can use while we create our solutions. I know that this is a bit of more uh, abstract <laughs> explanation of what it is, but you can think of the design patterns as a template or as a formula that prescribes how we can solve particular challenges. For example, reusing our page objects without creating every time their instance using a singleton, or we can 
uh, imagine that uh, this test data management, test data creation is handling through factories. Um, now, let's discuss what is our problem. Um, again, for this purpose, we're going to use the Lambda test, uh, my favorite uh, demo website, the playground. Um, and I created two tests here. Uh, the first of them we're, is going to compare any number of products and the second one is going to purchase them. Uh, so in our first case, we're going to type something here um, in the search. This autocomplete uh, menu will appear. It appears in a few seconds. Then we're going to click on the product. And as you can see here, we have this compare this product button. So I'm going to add the first product. Then I'm going to navigate again to the home page, type something else, add, for example, this refrigerator and add it to compare list as well. And then our test is going to click on this compare button on the top. And when we click it, this table uh, open, opens for us and we need to verify whether the proper um, details about the products are, are displayed here. So this is our first test. Um, again, I'm not going to type it. I'm going to show you already written test, but uh, just a few uh, explanations here for the code. Of course, we find here, um, you know, the search input. Um, if we zoom, we can find it uh, by this placeholder or by the label. Uh, we can use expat, as you know, when we press Control F and when we start typing, um, we can type input and then we can say text or add placeholder and we can type search for products. Here it is. This is the search. Then we're going to type something in it. And the tricky part here is when you type something, probably in our code we will need a hard-coded pause since depending uh, on the world on the website, uh, this takes a few milliseconds up to one or two seconds to appear. Uh, and the second challenge is, as you can see, it's hard to inspect it since um, it hides itself really fast. If you press Control Shift uh, P and then if you type focused, uh, we can click on that and then this menu won't uh, disappear. This makes our work for inspecting the different elements here easier. And um, the tricky part here uh, in this particular locators is that we don't want to find um, you know, the elements here by the title since it won't be unique. But instead, if you take a closer look here, uh, you will find that uh, at the end of this URL, the anchor, the href, we have the product ID. So uh, later uh, during the course, we are going to talk about this data management, but in most cases, probably during using the database or APIs, we can create these data products ourselves using the APIs and be sure that it's there. We will know the product ID so that using the product ID, we can select that and we can use string format or string interpolation to generate them. The second uh, important part out of this test is how we are going to verify the data. Uh, I mean, the clicking of the buttons, etc. it's easy. Um, it's not a problem. I mean, these buttons here, we can find it by label or um, by its text or by the title, again, using expat. Uh, I don't think that uh, this is an issue for us. However, here we can have multiple products, um, more than two. And probably if we need to write uh, this particular test, probably we need to make our test more general and be able to support more than two. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, we need to write complex locators. Uh, if we take a closer look, we'll see that this is uh, an HTML table. And we can select, uh, you know, particular row, but by its label here. Uh, in order to do that, we can type table, tbody, tr, which is table row, 
TD and then uh, we can select a particular TD which is the cell by its text uh, in our case for example imagine that we want the model and here we selected the model uh, and next depending on how many products uh, you have added we can select uh, on the same row the next cells and we can select them using expat access uh, if you are not familiar with expat access there is an awesome article about expat locators on the lambda test blog uh, you can find it in the links below in the description. Also in the links below in the description you will find all of the source code that later I'm going to show you. There is one repository for uh, adapter design pattern and one more for the proxy. And uh, also you will find uh, all the related articles. So if I type following sibling um, td uh, after that, I can select with an index uh, the particular column that I want. And uh, this is how we are going to write it in our code. So this is um, the first test. Let's see it and discuss uh, the current structure. This is C-sharp standard project. We use uh, an unit. Let me show you. Uh, there is a dedicated uh, video series on the Lambda Test channel about NUnit. I suggest you to check them if you are not familiar. But when you go and click Manage NuGet Packages, here NuGet pa Packages are like Maven dependencies in Java. Uh, we use them to install all of the dependencies. In our case for NUnit, we need these four packages. The Microsoft Test SDK, these three for NUnit, the Analyzers, the NUnit and the Test Adapter. Then um, we have four packages for Selenium. I added a few of them. The most important is the Selenium web driver. And for backward compatibility, I added the web driver manager. Since version 4.11, you don't need the web driver manager, which is responsible for downloading the proper driver. Instead, the built-in Selenium uh, manager uh, will be responsible for download the proper driver. And even now it includes uh, browser management, which means that if you, for example, want to execute the test on Firefox and you don't have Firefox installed, it will download the portable version of it and it will download the driver and then execute the tests. Again, uh, you can download, it's already there. Uh, also, yeah, I use the new syntax for global using so that I don't need to uh, place them uh, everywhere. Um, so I added, I added these usings in this usings class. Um, I can remove um, some of them and I can even move all of this uh, to as global usings as well. Also for the namespaces, I use the new syntax where I don't uh, need to nest them with curly brackets. So in this particular class, I oriented it with this test feature attribute, which means that this is a test class. In the setup, which is the test init uh, method, this will be executed before each test. We initialize the driver. I use WebDriver Manager to download the proper uh, driver here. Uh, maximize the browser, navigate to uh, the website, delete all of the cookies uh, to clear any uh, logins, etc. And um, this method, the teardown or the test cleanup, will be executed after each test, which means that this will uh, close any sessions. If you use Lambda Test Cloud, uh, basically you can put here uh, all of the initializations. Um, you can copy paste them from the capabilities generator. And here uh, is our test. Uh, this is the um, the test about the comparing products. Um, I used here uh, instead of using many parameters uh, in our private methods uh, and methods as a whole, I use the so-called POC objects or model classes where um, in this case I have uh, a special class here under uh, the folder models where uh, it represents one product. We have properties about the name, about the ID, about the price and any other information about this product. So I initialize two products here that I already know that they are on the, on the site, uh, the iPod and the iPod Shuffle. And I created basically two private methods here before we uh, upgrade the version with page objects, just for simplicity. 
let's review this compare uh, product method basically it's doing uh, everything that I already explained we are finding the search uh, we type the text there then um, we, we, we find the specific item there by product ID we use here string interpolation which starts with this dollar sign but as easy as that you can use string format if it's more familiar for you uh, if we use string interpolation uh, basically the thing that we want to format in this case the product ID uh, we use these curly brackets then um, in this version we use hard-coded pulse which is a bad practice we are going to upgrade it uh, because as I said depending on the load this will take a few seconds uh, to appear then we click it then um, we click compare this button uh, compare this product button and the next important part is how we assert the products again we need a hard-coded pulse here um, and um, again we use this complex expat that I explained that it's built based on two things based on the label probably we need to re uh, rename this parameter here to, to label so this is the label then we use forward sibling and then we find the next column based on the product and then it's easy we just find the product name the price the model the brand the weight depending uh, on the particular column and we verify them based on the expected product details that's basically our test here and uh, our test case number two uh, will be to purchase uh, one product again uh, we are going to search for it we are going to select it we are going to increase the quantity click add to cart click view cart um, in this simple version of this test again it's really simple because here you have hundreds of test cases uh, to be checked the different prices variations dates remove etc multiple products shipping taxes uh, however in this simple version we are going just to check that if we have two the proper total here is displayed we are going to check out again here on the next page there are many branches of the tests like for example we can log in this will be preferred we can use guest checkout however we are going to use the default uh, branch of the logic where we are going to register uh, a new account we are going to fill um, all of the fields here we are going again to check just the total nothing more again there are hundreds of test cases here uh, we are going to click the terms and conditions uh, here the tricky part that we are going to do with JavaScript is that you need to scroll down otherwise there will be an exception and we are going to finish the order that's basically the case the test case um, so I already implemented it um, so again we use uh, um, um, this model class with the default information about uh, iPod Touch um, again we search for the product we wait a bit we click on it uh, then we increase the quantity this is uh, how we do it here with clear and same case uh, again as you can see there is a lot of repetition in a minute we are going to fix it with page object models and the web driver wait for hiding some of the pauses we click add to cart then we wait then we click view cart we uh, check the total again as you can see here again we use following sigling uh, expat access um, and we have two more model classes about the user details and the billing that you can find under the models uh, folder and we have two important methods here few user details uh, really simple we find uh, we found uh, all of the elements using ID and we just typed everything from the user details mode if you need to implement the rest of the branches probably uh, you need to implement uh, other if else statements or implement them as switch um, the same ha uh, happens for uh, the few uh, others form and the last part is where again we check the total and uh, the tricky part as I told you is that we need to scroll to view um, uh, to find uh, this terms and agree button otherwise you will see an exception so we use this piece of JavaScript here this will automatically scroll into view and uh, we complete the order
that's it. Now, how we can fix uh, the hard-coded puzzles, the thread slips, because this is a bad practice, right? Uh, there is a whole video about it, uh, actually even two videos about thread slips, why it's not a good practice, another one about smart weights. Also, by the way, there is a really awesome smart weight feature in Lambda test. You can check the video as well if you don't want to worry about this, if you use mainly the Lambda test cloud. Uh, but anyway, uh, the difference here between the two versions is that I implemented here the WebDriver weight class. We initialize it in the test init. And if we search for it here, you will notice that in a few places, instead of using directly uh, find uh, driver find element. I use here this syntax wait until uh, expected conditions element exists and I uh, provided the bioocator. Uh, basically, everywhere or in, in most places, not all, but in 80% of the places, we were able to upgrade the solution um, and uh, this will automatically wait the necessary time uh, for you. Uh, the elements to appear. Also, don't uh, forget to install these Selenium Extras um, uh, weight helpers NuGet package because these expected conditions uh, are part of it. So this was version 2. Now, version 3 is where I upgraded the solution instead of, as I told you, uh, the compare uh, functionality and uh, the purchasing functionality there hundreds of test cases there uh, and we don't want to copy paste the code every time instead we want to reuse it um, and the pattern here to start with is of course uh, the page object design pattern uh, there is a dedicated video about it on the Lambda test channel I suggest you to check it uh, but for now I'm just going to show you the version with it in simple terms what is the page object design pattern for each web page um, part of your website we have a special class about it and there we put all of the elements so that we can reuse so that we can reuse uh, the locators and if there is a change in them we can change it off, uh, only there and also um, we place all of the actions methods and in some variations of it we put uh, all of the assertions as well so that we can reuse if there is a special logic there or if there are any uh, exception messages. Let's see them. I, um, you will notice that uh, in my version here it's really simple. I have a base class called web page. It's really simple abstract base class where we are going just to reuse the driver, the weight, and the actions class. Uh, and here we have protected variables for them. And then each page object is going to derive from this class. And here this is why we call the, their base constructor. Um, then each page, um, all of the elements are present as public properties. Again, depending on the variation of the pattern, these properties uh, can be fields, they can be private, it depends what you want to achieve. Here I just wrapped um, all of the elements as public uh, properties and uh, you will notice that not everywhere uh, I reused uh, and, and put here uh, the calls to uh, this, um, whether the element is visible or whether it exists there. Uh, in other places we just call driver find elements maybe uh, if you use uh, the base class you can put this in a protected method part of the base class it's up to you and then next we uh, i moved basically all of the actions here inside this page object that's all and also the assertions this is my preferred way um, and the big difference here is that we're not only reusing the code but we're building the so-called DSL, Domain Specific Language, which later in a minute when we see the refactor test, you will notice that basically our test is reading like sentences. It makes our test much more readable because basically this DSL, Domain Specific Language, we don't care about the specifics here. Uh, you're going to care them only when you develop the page object or later when you want to maintain them or fix them 
uh, to accommodate new requirements. Um, we don't care how we wait, how we wait, for example, whether we call JavaScript here or not. Really, when you open the test, uh, you will notice that again, we have only the range phase where we care about what is our test data, because this is important for you to understand what is the real test case. And then here, it's really much shorter, much more readable. We see just the scenario that we uh, want to automate. And during the DSL, we find what we are doing here, right? Now, um, and lastly, here in this version, uh, we have this common, um, basically, class that initializes all of the pages instead of repeating this everywhere inside of our tests. Uh, later, if you change, for example, the base constructor of all uh, page objects, we can upgrade this, we can refactor it just in a single place, uh, and it's much easier to find all of the web pages instead of wondering whether we have a particular page or not. Later, if you want, uh, to give access to your users to the page you're going to add it to this website class. That's all. Uh, now, let's review the proxy class. I added a diagram to um, our presentation here. And uh, let's discuss the proxy. Again, the proxy um, is a simplified version of the adapter, actually. Uh, it provides a surrogate or a placeholder for another object to control access to it. In our case, this will be our web iWeb driver or iWeb element. Uh, we are going to use uh, another principle in object-oriented programming languages. It's called composition. And um, many people prefer it um, instead of using directly base classes or the so-called inheritance in object-oriented programming. Uh, in our case, the proxy, how it, uh, it will help us is that it, it's going to uh, basically hide the complexity of using uh, all of these WebDriver weights and how we wait for the elements and everything. We can directly put this logic inside our custom implementation of the proxy here. We are going to wait for the elements here. If you want to, uh, for example, click on the element, we can for example, wait for the elements to be clickable. If we want every time to scroll into view, we can put this logic also here inside the implementation of the proxy. Um, so let's see again. Uh, there are two repositories that you can find in the description below. The first one will be about the proxy. Um, so really simple here is uh, the implementation of the proxy. The really important part here is that we are implementing um, we are implementing the the so-called subject in our case the subject is the iweb driver this is um, yeah basically the two proxies the, the first one is going to implement the iweb driver which means that we will have to implement all of the method part of this interface if we open it with uh, if we uh, click and go to the definition, um, basically we need to implement all of this. Uh, let me show you. We need to implement this poll, scroll, squid, manage, navigate, switch, URL, title, page source, all the methods part of this interface. Um, and as I said, we are using composition. Uh, the composition principle in object-oriented programming languages is where classes should achieve polymorphic behavior and code reuse by their composition or by containing an instances of other classes that implement the desired functionality. In our case, this is the iWeb, dri uh, iWeb driver and the web driver wait. Uh, and we achieve that with, um, you know, uh, coding these references instead of using inheritance uh, from a base or parent class. And this is especially important uh, in languages like C Sharp and Java, where multiple inheritance is not allowed. Uh, so, as I said, here uh, in this version, we do two things. In our find element, you will notice that we use the web driver wait here instead of uh, driver find. This means that every time when we call our 
WebDriver proxy implementation, we are going for to wait for the element to exist. And we are going to return, uh, actually, uh, as you can see, this web element proxy in a minute, we are going to see it, but it implements I iWeb element, so it's fine, we are going to return it here. But in reality, every time here, again, when you call, uh, for example, um, to search inside a, a, another element, we are going again to wait for it. We can add again. When you want to click it, we can wait for the element to be clickable, then to click it. And uh, we did the same for the finds element. Um, and if we look into the web element proxy, uh, basically this is the implementation of the pattern. We need to implement the actual interface. This is how uh, we don't need to change anything in our pages, nothing more really. Uh, we the, the only difference here is that in our tests, when we create the Chrome driver, instead of initializing it directly to the iWeb driver, to the iWeb driver that we are going to use in our pages, we are going to assign the web driver proxy. And that's fine because the web driver proxy is the implementation of the iWeb driver interface. And behind the scenes, it, it's going when when you go find, it's going to wait every time. We we um, basically hide uh, all of those complexities. But again, as you can see here in the web element proxy, the big difference is that every time we wait for the element to be clickable, and when we search for elements, we wait for them uh, to exist. Otherwise, we're just calling uh, the internal element here um, or the actual subject that we use using the composition principle. However, the big problem here is that you're implementing basically the same interface. We cannot add new methods like uh, wait for Ajax uh, or um, others. We cannot improve the interface. For example, if you don't like the same keys that it's used for multiple things, uh, we cannot change it for, for example, a method called type text. Or um, anyway, uh, and we can solve all those uh, challenges using the adapter design pattern. So let's review the adapter design pattern. Here is the diagram. It's a little bit more complex, but not really. I mean, it's just um, this is why I choose to first show you the proxy and then the adapter. Um, so it can help us to eliminate these usages of hard-coded pauses in our automated tests. And um, again, we're going to use again these explicit weights, but also we're going to add new methods like wait until ready, wait for Angular, wait for Ajax. Uh, we can improve uh, the interfaces. And these improved interfaces are here. This is called um, a target. And this target, it's uh, basically the actual implementation of this target interface is this adapter, uh, which is used to adapt uh, the adaptee interface. In our case, this is iWeb driver and the iWeb element. Basically, this new interface defines, you know, how from now on we are going to use in our page objects or in our tests the driver and the actual iWeb element. In order not to confuse them, I renamed uh, um, our interface instead of using iElement or iWeb element, not to confuse it with the original iWeb element that comes from Selenium, I called it iComponent. And as you will notice, the new methods here, uh, instead of using findElement, we have now findComponent. And the big improvement here in this mini um, library is that now our components or web elements, they know how they were found. They have an instance to the bilocator that, that they were located by. Also, they have now, instead of same keys, they have this type text. Also, they have a new method called hover, and we can hover now. Uh, we can later add uh, other methods like focus. Uh, also, we have an instance, a public property, to the wrapped element uh, that we are going to use again through composition. And here in the driver interface, we added two new methods, wait for Ajax and component exists. Um, also, we deleted some of the methods that we are not going to use. 
and this find component methods instead of find element they are going to return actually the component adapter uh, or the actual implementation of these new interfaces so let's uh, review uh, now the adapter um, now in our in our uh, page objects uh, the difference is that instead of the iWeb driver interface and the usage of iWeb element, now we are going to use the two new interfaces here. This is the big difference now. Also, uh, the another difference is that now instead of calling find element, I'm using this find component. And of course, everywhere uh, instead of send keys and calling clear, I'm going to use this type text. Let's review quickly the new interface. This is the, the new iDriver interface of the adapter. We have the URL. Also, I have a new, uh, I forgot about this, but we have a new method called start. This is called a factory method and it's going to, we are going to use it to initialize the driver based on this uh, enumeration about the browser itself. Uh, and um, basically we, we uh, discussed all of this. The component, as I said, the important part is this uh, public uh, by property, uh, how the element was located. We have the, uh, the type text, the click, and of course the modified version of the find element methods, in this case, find component. And let's review quickly the actual implementation. So the driver adapter, this is our adapter class, which is similar to the proxy class that we discussed, but now instead of implementing the iWeb driver interface. Now we're implementing our brand new iDriver interface. And again, true composition principle, instead of using inheritance, we are holding these two, two private variables instances to the iWeb driver and web driver weight. We have this brand new factory method for starting the browser. Uh, basically, we moved here all of the logic for the web driver manager as i said this is just for backward compatibility uh, otherwise this will happen automatically for you in the new versions um, of selenium and uh, if we navigate to the find component uh, you will notice that here again like in the proxy we use the web driver wait uh, to wait for the element to exist this is the native web element found by web driver and then instead of initializing a proxy, we are initializing the new component driver that implements the I component interface. And we are providing uh, all of its dependencies. In this case, the web driver, the native web element, and the locator so that we can initialize the pipe property. We can add other logic here as well. Uh, and um, by, by the way, this is one of the drawbacks of this pattern that it's not easy to extend and uh, later we'll fix this problem uh, in the next course out of this module when we discuss the decorator design pattern instead of you know adding new logic here to the find component we're going to see how we can use the decorators uh, to extend this without modifying our core logic of our test library but yeah here we can scroll into view we can highlight we can add new logic again this can bring some regression to our uh, test this is why I don't I prefer the decorators instead uh, so for the find components we're doing the same we're um, waiting for all of the elements to be present then we are for reaching them we are creating all of the components here adding to the list and then we are turning the same list we have new method like as I said this is the main benefit of the adapter design pattern we added this brand new methods like the start and then component to exist. Uh, we can wait and we can use this new by property of the component where we can wait um, until the component is there. Uh, we have this new wait for Ajax functionality where we are using the web driver wait to execute this script and wait for all of this um, asynchronous JavaScript request to finish. Um, and the actual implementation of the component, this is the component adapter, again, instead of uh, implementing the uh, iWeb element, now we're implementing the iComponent and using the composition 
we are holding references to everything that we need. In this case, this is WebDriver, the actions, the IO web element, this is the, uh, the element that we found, how it was located. In most places, probably you are going to return directly the native element in its properties. Uh, however, uh, we can uh, we changed uh, the actual interface of the iWeb element and now when you go click you can instruct your mini framework mini library whether you want for the element uh, for the library to wait for the element to be clickable and then we can click it also for instead of using this syntax everywhere clear and then same keys we have this brand new type text we have a brand new hover method that inside, uh, instead of repeating uh, all of those methods here, we, we can just call hover and this will use the uh, actions class to hover our element. We have internal methods like way to be clickable and of course the find component that it's returning our brand new interface. And if we look into our tests, um, again, instead of using the iWebDriver interface now, we use the iDriver. Um, now, uh, we use the new start method to initialize everything inside. And then we are just passing the driver interface. From there, anything else stays the same. Again, the, the difference is inside our page objects where instead of using iWebDriver and iWeb element, we use our two modified interfaces um, of our adapters, uh, where we adapted them. Again, there is this uh, cons of this pattern. If you don't need to extend it in the future, then pick it. It's really simpler compared to other patterns like uh, decorators or observers, but it's powerful enough to help you uh, solve our challenges. In this um, course out of this module about design patterns, we cover the proxy and the adapter design patterns that can help us to um, create this mini test library uh, to make our tests more maintainable, more readable, more usable. Uh, in the next part uh, out of this course, we are going to discuss um, the decorator design pattern that can help us further improve these patterns where we can add new logic uh, to our mini library without causing any regression or any other problems. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I, I will be really glad to hear your opinion. Don't forget to get your free certification. Uh, check the Lambda test blog. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you.